check out the documents. Um, so, what happens when, um, here, I'm gonna, okay, so when you, uh, sorry, kind of unprepared, I guess you'd say, but when you're checking for an event, when you use SDL pull event or SDL wait event, what's, here's kind of the process of what happens. User presses key. SDL pump event is called. And you're probably thinking, well, I called SDL pull event. SDL pull event and SDL wait event call SDL pull pump event automatically. So what SDL pump event is it takes the actual things that happen, the key press, the mouse, and all that stuff, and it actually uh, stores it into a queue. So you have that information. And then the rest of SDL pull event, if, the, if there's an actual event, it's going to take that event off the queue and store it into your event structure. Um, so that becomes very very useful um so after pump event is called events are stored into the queue then um, uh, events are taken off queue and stored into an SDL event So since STL pull event and STL wait event call STL pump event automatically, you might not use this, but uh, you might use it if you're using STL peep event. And um, I'll show you why right now, pretty much. Um, so STL peep event takes in a couple of different parameters. Um, I'll just show you. It has a number, it, it takes in an, an STL event structure takes in a number of events, it takes in uh, an action, and it also takes in a mask. Um, so, oops, I'm in the structures, I need to go to functions. Alright, so, basically, see, I did not lie, everything I said. So, um, big point of interest is the action. So this is going to be basically determine what the function actually does. Uh, it can be either of these three things add event, peak event, or get event all preceded by SDL um, so add event takes a number of events and it will add them to the back of the queue so it doesn't really utilize the mask the next two do SDL peak event is going to look at events this many and then any events matching the mask are going to be added to the front of the queue. So it's going to go, f so here, as a little visual example. So we have a queue. First event, second event, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. So let's say you had five, you picked uh, four as your number maybe, and you're checking for an SDL key down all right so then it's going to be like okay that's mouse motion mouse button video resize hey we got a uh, key down here so it's gonna uh, return that and but the only thing is it's not removed from the queue so if it's not removed from the queue you're going to have to remove it yourself pretty much so that's peak event, but if you want to use get event, it works almost just like peak event, except the events are removed from the queue. I personally haven't used the this entire function. I used it once. Never really found use for it because I still pull event covers my needs so far. If I ever find need to use it, I'll use it because I'm confident that I can. Um, so basically the main things you want to know actually I'm talking like this is a conclusion I'm still talking about one more thing after it all but the main things you want to know you want to get familiar with the SDL event union 
you want to know STL pole event and STL weight event. Alright. So then the last thing I want to talk about is STL push event. Because uh, the STL event union isn't only used to read events. You can actually make your own events happen, I guess you'd say. So STL push event uh, takes an event structure and it puts it on the queue. So um, I guess you can the only thing I can think of right now where I would find that useful is maybe forcing a window resize. But uh, personally, that just like doesn't appeal to me, but it's, it's interesting. I'll give it that. So see, it will take an event structure, and it's going to push events onto the queue. This is important to note. It doesn't modify the state of the device in SDL. And what that means is, if you sent in like a mouse button event, like a left mouse button down, and SDL's in SDL's all internal event handling stuff, it says that the state is released. It's not going to change the state to pressed because you force that event. So that's kind of important to note because uh, some people just check to see what the event was, but other people might uh, check to find the state. So they might be like, uh, might make an SDL event, then be like event dot. I don't know what the name is exactly, but there might be event dot mouse motion or mouse button dot state. I think it is. I don't remember exactly. That's why I have to use the STL docs. That's why they're very useful because you forget simple things like that. At least I do. But so you could check the state and it would tell you if it was pressed or released. Um, so it's not going to actually modify that if you use STL push event. So STL push event is pretty useful. You just you can make an event structure, store it with all the information you want, and then use STL push event and it'll store it onto the queue. Um, so I think that's pretty much all you'll really use for STL event stuff. Um, this has some other functions that you might use. Um, this stuff might be useful. It just gets states of different things. Um, the only two things I didn't talk about besides getting states is uh, filters. You can set up filters which will process events. Uh, it, so you can stop certain events from even being placed on the queue. Um, so you might find that useful. So if you do, go in the docs and check it out. But uh, I'm going to be ending this video. So next time, uh, I'm going to probably talk about uh, stuff that's not SDL specific. So it's not really going to be an SDL tutorial. It'll be more of a uh, development tutorial, I guess you could say. Um, I'll probably, I think I'm going to talk about a game loop and go into what it is, what's in it. And then we might just talk about different... Um, after that, I think I might throw up a small tutorial on SDL Mixer just so you can set it up and start using it to play audio because SDL's audio module is lacking, I guess you'd say. But, uh, so, I guess that's the end of this video, so, till next time.